made friends and incredibly enough she came back to me in 2019 uh and said I, she'd always dreamed of me directing the film uh thought that uh, you know my ability as a storyboard artist uh, combined with the director was a really unique uh uh you know skill set to bring to the to the table and and uh, we got uh, Colin Wooten, my dear uh, friend and writing and producing partner, uh, got the band back together. And uh, we had the money to, uh, to back off us to cast. And Thomas Hayden Church was the first uh, uh, actor to uh, sign on to the film, and what a gift. And from that moment on, we were, we were off and running. Uh, so it, it's, you know, it's, the story of the film is very much the story of independent filmmaking. You know, never give up, always believe in yourself, and, and just persevere, push through. So... Uh, it's been a long process, but, it, but, you know, again, but thank goodness in many ways, in every way, because in that gap, you know, I, I, I had the opportunity to work on, you know, probably 60, 70 movies, uh, you know, uh, and mainly I can't imagine anybody else, you know, in, in these roles. Uh, and, and what a gift. And we, you know, we joked on set that had we made the movie, you know, 20 years ago, Rudy Pankow would have been four years old. So, you know, it's uh, we we had the right cast and the right time to make to make this movie, and and uh, so I, I'm I'm happy we had the gap. Well, was Thomas Hayden Church always associated with the Michael, film? You're on mute. Sorry, was Thomas uh, Hayden Church always associated with the film? No, no. Uh, he uh, he came. He was top of our list, uh, uh, and it took a while, you know, uh, for, for him to respond. But once he did, you know, he said. He'd always been looking for a, a story uh, about his beloved state of Texas, and uh, this one ch checked every box. And, uh, you know, he and I would speak on the phone every day uh, leading up to production, uh, really formed a, a, a friendship and a bond, and mainly a trust, you know, because uh, it had been 20 years since I had directed my last feature film. And so, you know, that, that bond that we, that we created just with phone calls paid dividends on, uh, on the first day of shooting because I think the entire crew and the entire cast saw that he trusted me implicitly and so that they also, okay, you know, we can we can relax with this guy. We can open up to this director. We can we can really bring our A game because Thomas is, is doing this. That was the amazing gift that he gave me and the rest of the film was his incredible commitment to this project. You know, in pre-production, he uh, worked with me and Cohen and Julie on the screenplay you know, uh, he and his good friend David Denny, who's in the film as Virgil, uh, you know, were, were, were hammering the script every single day and, and coming up with great ideas. And and I also work as, as a director with, with complete and open collaboration on set. You know, I, I, uh, I you know, you're bringing these amazing talents to your, to your project and you've got to trust them. And so listen to their ideas, you know, give them the ability to, to you know, to, to 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 take the script as a foundation and run with it, and let's see what we get. There are some days where we didn't change a line, and there are other days, particularly with the comedy, you just let these amazing actors go, and you, you know, you, you get a gold mine you never could have conceived of when you were sitting there trying to to write the script. So uh, yeah, he and the rest of the the, the crew, uh, the cast, uh, were just an immense gift. Uh, 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 you know, Robert Altman said it best that the. 90% of directing is, is casting, and it couldn't have been more true. Yeah, you mentioned uh, A game. I mean, he, he brought A level actor uh, uh, prowess to this role. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine some other actors doing that role, but it's just like, exactly. it, it's like he was born to do it. I was just, uh, he was magnetic throughout the whole film. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, uh, absolutely. He is as a human being. And, uh, and this role meant so much to him, you know, again, like we spent time going out to oil rigs and researching every facet of it. You know, he, he, he put his heart and soul into it. And then ultimately he just brings, he, he can't not just bring his magnetism to set, you know, and, and his wit and his, and his humor. And, and, uh, uh, you know, he had everybody cracking up between takes. And as soon as you yell action, you know, he's in, uh, amazing to watch, uh, and, and, you know, and it elevates everybody else uh, to that same level, um, which, which was just amazing to see. And, and, you know, he and Rudy quickly formed a great chemistry, which was so important. Like, the whole movie rested on their chemistry and their relationship, you know, that, that, that 
father-son relationship that grows throughout the film. And, and you know, and, and a lot of that was attributed to, you know, what at first appeared to be a very a daunting thing that our third day of shooting was one of the most emotional scenes in the film before these two, you know, men really got a chance to know each other as actors and as people. But because they pulled it off so beautifully, I think it, 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 they were, it, you know, bonded so quickly uh, and, and, and trusted each other. And so, you know, the rest of the film really benefited from that. Um, yes, uh, they, they, uh, you know, everybody was, you know, Carrie Ann Ma Moss just brought such a luminous performance to the film. And they, you know, I, I, Bruce Dern, I mean, come on, a legendary actor. To, you know, the stories he would tell off screen were just, were just incredible. Uh, uh, the history, I, I, when I first met him, I just sat for two hours in his trailer just listening to his stories. Uh, so again, you know, an amazing uh, gift and opportunity for for a director to be able to work with these with these talents. When when we first meet uh, Thomas Hayden Church in the movie, I thought he was the sheriff because okay. he's kind of he, you just meet him. He's a guy in a solo, in a bar, or it's not really. It's like a, a small town restaurant. Uh, yeah. where, but you get the feeling this is where everybody goes. And exactly. uh, the way he was uh, talking, he was so commanding. I thought he was the sheriff. And he's checking out this guy who's a stranger in town. Yes, yes, it's the, it's the, the kindness of, of strangers, you know, and, and that's one of the themes of the film is is, is tolerance and acceptance, and and uh, yeah, he, you know, a moral is 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 a larger than life character, you know. Having grown up in Texas, you know, I've seen so many, you know, people like him, and. Uh, uh, and yeah, he's in the community center. He knows everyone. That was important that we kind of just showed that everybody, he knows everybody. It's a very tight knit community. And into that is coming this outsider who to them is, it is like an alien world. And, and, and in the joy of, of seeing the film through Irwin's experience in, in showing that at first, you know, some of these people that may seem very strange and off putting are, are in fact, you know, beautiful human beings, uh, that can, you know, really helped him. Uh, overcome uh, many of uh, you know the, the the troubles in his own life, and so that's one of the you know major themes in the film. And as a filmmaker, gave me the license to really you know to to show the beauty uh, of the Texas landscape and of its people, and and and, and ultimately the you know the universal themes that are going to attract an audience you know worldwide. And so uh, uh, yeah, it was just, it, you know it's been a dream project. Uh, there was a film that came out a couple of years ago, The Iron Orchard. Yes. Okay. And and I uh, the novel is fantastic. Uh, I don't think they quite captured uh, the essence of the novel for that particular film, but I got a little of the vibe of that novel in your film. Uh, well, uh, you know, there's such a rich history of great Texas storytelling, whether it's in novels or novellas or short films or films, television, right? And I've worked on, I've had the great pleasure as a storyboard artist working on many of them um and so and and you know bill whitliff uh, was my my little league baseball coach and got, gave me my first job as a filmmaker he wrote lonesome dove yeah and 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 the black stallion and and uh so many other great texas stories and so you know it was very important to me to pay to pay tribute to that great legacy and uh uh you know, so and, and and Cole Thompson's novel *Chocolate Lizards* that the film is loosely based on. You know, again, it's great stories and great great characters, and 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 so and I, you know, I, I wanted I wanted to be a very comedic and 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 film, but to be truthful and honest that these aren't caricatures; these are real people being told in a very cinematic way, and so. Uh, you know, I have a great respect, and, and I love small town Americana, especially here in Texas. And and I wanted to to explore that landscape and explore those characters uh, because I've I've had such a, a joy growing up around that in, in around and in that world. So we wanted to do, you know, we wanted to tell it truthfully. Uh, Carry on, Moss has a really good arc. Uh, yeah. I, I it kind of came out of the blue. I didn't see that coming. Well, I have to give so much credit to her because when she came to us, uh, you know, she uh, she rightfully said, you know, I, I love this story and I love that you've got Thomas A. Church and, and, and Bruce Stern in your film. Uh, but the, the character of, of Faye Brown is a little uh, a little light, you know, she's a little bit of a background character. 
And she challenged me, Cohen and Julie, to 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 reimagine her character. What not out of selfishness, but what how how can we help the story by enhancing her character? And so uh, you know, we 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 came up with ways. Uh, some, you know, Cohen Wooten came up with some really brilliant ways. You know, I think one of the main things was that she lives in a trailer. She's transitory. That when things get tough, she can just pack up and go. And she sort of had a history of that. And so that in this story, there's the hope and the chance that she might finally settle down. You know, so that was a great story arc. It was not a, definitely, the character of Faye in the, in the book is, is, is completely different. Um, so we wanted to make a much more realistic and a much more dramatic and heartfelt character. Uh, and in and, and, and her sort of difficult relationship with Merle over the years, that finally has... You know, a payoff at the end of the film. So, Carrie Ann Moss challenged us as storytellers and as writers to to do better. And then once uh, we showed her uh, uh, how we planned to tackle that in the script, uh, she came on to the project and then just brought her magic. Uh, two two brief questions just to wrap it up. Um, sure. I, I I I had a hard time at the very beginning of the film because I just didn't believe. No matter how low budget a film, uh, the lead actor obviously gets fired off a film, and that's why he's driving through Texas on his way back to uh, L.A. in shame. Uh, yeah. He gets fired because he has a cell phone that sets off explosive squibs. But I, yeah. I was on a, I worked on a film in 1987. It was a three million dollar film, and uh, they, they were so like everybody was aware that they were, uh, you know, a detonation was about to go through. And they didn't have cell phones back then, but they had walkie-talkies. And it was yep. total radio silence. And I yep. was just like, what kind of low-budget film would even allow a guy to bring a cell phone onto the, a live set, you know? Well, it, he's an inexperienced uh, uh, young greenhorn. Yeah. And, and I, I got fired off my very first movie oh. when I was 16. Well, I was so going to... We've all experienced that. Thomas, you know, that was one of the moments in the script that really resonated with him because he's been fired off a movie before. We all make dumb mistakes, you know, in our youth. And, you know, when, when I was working on the script with Julian Cohen, you know, uh, I we were really searching for what is that big moment in the beginning that's going to really, you know, send our, 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 our main character in shame to Texas. And, and it was, I was working on Mission Impossible and I saw that very sign, you know, uh, to turn off all your cell phones and radios, why, you know, pyrotechnics. And I was like, that's it, you know, that's it. And, uh, and I talked to the effects guys, you know, on, on, on mission and said, would this, could this work? Would this really happen? And I'm like, oh, absolutely. And so I thought, oh, that's the perfect setup, you know, that he, He's so green, and he gets, you know, he gets distracted by the director coming over. He just tucks it in to his, into his pocket, and he's just so excited to be there to live his dream, he forgets about it. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's definitely a movie. Uh, we're telling a movie within a movie, and, and uh, 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 you know, hopefully the, 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 the cataclysmic itself is so fun that, uh, you know, you're willing to, to dispel your disbelief for a moment. But it's all based on, on true. I, I experienced something similar, you know, as a 16 year old on my first move. Uh, fo uh, uh, follow up question, last question, and thank you so much sure. for your time. Uh, you, oh, you've got a great uh, resume of just uh, as a storyboard artist. There's like over two dozen uh, top name films that you worked as a storyboard artist on. Uh, you mentioned Mission Impossible. H how did that come around? I mean, Obviously, you you have an artistic uh, an artistic background and can draw well because they wouldn't hire you if you just were drawing stick figures, you know. <laughs> well, I, and thank you. You know, when I was a kid uh, growing up, you know, Star Wars lit the flame for me at eight years old, and I was already an obsessive artist. And then it became all about movies all the time. When Raiders Lost Art came out, I was eleven, and I I saw Joe Johnson's storyboards for the first time. I was like, "That's it! I can do that." You mean? These artists help Steven Spielberg pre-visualize, you know, his movies. Uh, that that's my way in. And so uh, back to Bill Whitliff, you know, he was my little league baseball coach in Austin, Texas, and uh, I would, you know, I really sucked at baseball that year because I needed glasses and I did, I couldn't see the ball. So we just sat on the bench and talked movies, and I would show him my artwork, and and he gave me my very first job. Uh, right out of college, and then that led to Days to Confused, and that's you know literally. From that, it's just been this cascade of incredible projects 
um, you know, yeah, leading up to the Mission Impossibles and the Top Gun Mavericks. And, you know, the interesting thing about it, to be a storyboard artist, it, you can't, it, it's not just about drawing. That, that's one skill set, sure. But you have to also be, in my mind, uh, you have to have the mind of a director, of an editor, of a cinematographer. Um, you have to know blocking. You have to know so many facets. You have to be a writer. You have to have so many facets of all these departments to be able to really help design how a sequence is built. Um, and, and aren't there like little uh, indicators like when the camera pushes in or uh, stuff like yeah, that that you have to be able to... From Raiders of Lost Ark. So like here's some of my storyboards from, from uh, Accidental Text and I, I draw very simple when I'm just doing my own omission. They're very highly detailed. But yeah, I, I remember as a kid like thinking, what does this arrow mean? And then I would watch the movie on VHS and see, oh, it means the camera's moving. And then later I would read, oh, well, what is a dolly? You know, this is way before the internet. Um, you know, so yeah, I taught myself uh, how to do it. I got an English degree from the University of Texas. I taught myself how to be a storyboard artist and and, and then learn through, you know, doing it. And, and I've had the incredible fortune to work on, as you said, all these big movies and, and, and really just learn from all these directors, uh, editors, and cinematographers. You know, I go into every department and, and, you know, not only work with them, but also learn from them and, and uh, see how the best of the best work and then try to emulate that in my own uh, work ethic. And, and, and when I'm directing, bring that to the table. So it's it's been an incredible career and a great gift uh, uh, as a director to, to, to be able to, 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 you know, utilize all that experience. Thank you so much. Accidental Texan is opening up on uh, next week on March 7th, I believe. March yes, 7th, yes. March, March, March 8th. March 7th and 8th, is, it, it goes wide. Okay.